Welcome back to the 25 Days of Flows, the Power Automate Advent Calendar. Today we've reached December 19th and we're heading really close to the big day and I'm hoping you're enjoying the buildup. Today we're going to talk about Power Ops and we're going to talk about it from a admin perspective. And we're going to imagine that we'd like to back up our Power Ops to OneDrive for business every week all right now there is a temp there are a few templates that can help you with this but i want to go through the template and kind of tell you why you might want to use it and then you'll get the revised version of it in when you download the flow okay so we're going to start by looking at our connectors today we have several starting with schedule so we'll be scheduling this flow it could be daily it could be weekly it could be monthly whatever you'd like we're going to use the power platform for admins so you do need to be either an environmental or a tenant admin um, we're going to talk about power apps for admins connector and the onedrive for business connector so all of them are included the only thing you have to remember is that your http uh, may be a premium connector so we'll look at that in flow to make sure you'll see all the flags for premium whenever it applies okay let's get started so we're going to head over to uh, flow and you can see that i've already built the flow this is day 19 save power apps for all environments now in order to to use this flow though you need to be a tenant admin because only tenant admins can actually look across all environments so keep that in mind I'm a tenant admin in this environment, so this is not a problem for me. I don't um, always want to run this every day, so I do run it every week. And I think the good this is a good thing to run because what it actually does is it backs up any apps that are in those environments to OneDrive as an MSAPP file. And so it's a way of not only backing up, but also storing versions of your uh, power app separately so when you talk about power apps version you can always restore to a previous version but it's it's it can be complicated when you want to actually go look at that version without impacting the current current version so what we're going to do is back it up to our onedrive so that actually these versions actually can be uh, opened up individually right and so we don't have to worry about impacting the current version we can open up the previous versions and open and reuse them all right so we start with the reoccurrence we've already talked about this a couple of times but basically you'll just be configuring it at the frequency you'd like and here's the new one here we're using get environments with the power platform admin connector and let's check on this one so we're just going to add an action just to see if we have a premium flag i don't believe we do but i double check power platform admin power platform for admins and i think it is one word power platform and there it is it has no premium flag so i think we're good yeah it's not coming up under the premium so we're not premium we're not premium for power apps for admins either now where I think in this flow we are premium is HTTP let's double check and we may there it is and it doesn't have a premium flag so yeah it, oh yes it does okay so this is where we're premium of the http okay so let's go and break this down we've got the reoccurrence then we add the get environments from the power platform admin connector uh, what is important is that you use your api version and you can check that just by checking on the connector page, what version it is. Um, if you use the template, it'll just put the right one in there and you're fine if it gives you, if you are back one or two, it's okay. And then you may have to set a page size for this, depending on how big your environment is, like how many in environments you have, you may have to turn pagination on to make sure you get them all. It totally depends on the size of your tenant. Um, then after you do that, you have an apply to each. 
the apply to each basically is going to go against the environments. So basically, after it gets the list of your environments, then it will do an apply to each on each one using the get apps as admin, uh, power apps admin connector. And what this is going to do is get all the apps in each environment. Okay. And then after it has all the apps in each environment, then it's going to do an, another apply to each within that apply to each. And this is something you can do in any flow. You can nest apply to each is inside of an apply to each, but you can tell that we've renamed these so that you can tell a difference. Apply to each environment versus apply to each power app and now in this one it's it's iterating through the result of this action so this right here is coming out of get apps as admin we're using the value there and then we're getting the um each app as admin we're getting the environment name and the power app name and the version and then we're using the http to get any app data and you'll notice that we're using this thing called read only value so you'll see this under this is from the get app as admin so if we go in here and read only value that is under get app as admin and you want to take that read only value which is going to give you a document uri it doesn't allow you to change it or anything, but that URI is going to be necessary for it to retrieve the actual app data or the MSAPP file, as we put in the comment here. And then it will take that file and one app at a time, it will upload it to the folder that you desire. Now, in um, in in the in the in the template, I think it also says test apps, but you can pick any any um, folder you'd like um, for this. And I don't think I have. Yeah, I do. So let's do. Let's put it in the folder called Power Apps. In that folder, I think I have some folders. So I'll just put it in the templates folder, just for today, so you can see. All right, so now it's going to take that app. It's going to take the file name, a dash, and the the time in year, month, day. And you can see that if you look, if you hover over these, you can actually see the formula. I wish I could make the formula bigger. Let's see. We're going to click on it, and then we'll see it over here. So Control A, Control C, and let's add this to the comment so we can see it. Edit comment so I think we know this but I want to put the formula here so the formula right here is just going to take the properties of the last modified time for the actual app and then put that in the title so understand that the title is not having today's date it is having the date of the last time the file was modified okay so that's what that formula is. That way you actually have a record of what version that was, what snapshot that was. And then you're going to do file content. You're going to take the body of the HTTP request, and that is your actual file that it's going to save to that folder. So really powerful flow. I really love it. I think another thing you can get out of this flow is taking the time to, uh, let's go ahead and test it. Take the time to look at the JSON that results from each of these actions, because what you'll find is a lot of useful stuff that you might want to use a different way. So while that's doing that, I'm going to open up Get Environments, and you'll notice that it is getting all the environments in my tenant. It's also getting what region they're in and where they are located in the world. So if you have multiple regions in your environments, you'll be able to tell from the JSON which region is which and so you could actually modify this to have a filter array that filters by a particular region or filters by a particular location so think about all the options you have as you look through these environments you can also find out whether the environment is production or trial let's say you want to just get a list of all your trial environments you can do that this way and so always suggest that with these admin connectors 
that you study what's available in the JSON and then think about how that might be helpful to you from an admin perspective. Okay, as we, uh, this is already completed, it ran successfully. There are not a lot of apps for it to back up. But if you look at, again, the uh, Power Apps for Admins um, connector, again, you get a lot of things in the um, list, in the value of the output. You get whether or not uh, it's landscape or portrait, what its orientation is. You get um, the version of the app. You get how many major and minor versions there are. You get owner names, okay? And you can tell whether the owner's a user or whatever they might be, maybe they're a service account. You can see all of this in this output. You can even see um, what uh, the applications are using as connectors and their entity references. So really, really rich output from there. And then finally, um, the HTTP request is helping us get to the file itself. Um, I don't, I don't, there's not much JSON that comes out of that except for the actual content, which we're gonna use when we save the file. So, so my recommendation to you is don't just use this file, this uh, flow for what it's doing, Use it as a study tool to find out what's available in the admin connectors. And then you'll be able to devise your own kind of solutions using the admin connector. So I'm going to go back to OneDrive. And I believe we put them in the templates folder. First Power Apps and then templates. So. I'm kind of double using this folder because this folder is also for templates. Um, you know, like when you build a template, all that data comes in here. But here you can see the MSS, MSAPP files that were stored here. And so uh, very, 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 very powerful uh, connectors that we're talking about today. I encourage you, give them a try. And again, I wish you a very happy holiday, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow for day 20 of the 25 days of flows, the Power Automate Advent Calendar.